Good afternoon to everyone, and welcome to the Board of Health virtual meeting on Thursday, August 24th, scheduled for 3.30. My name is Thomas Corey. Present with me via Zoom is Michael Coughlin and Tess Curran, our agent of the board. Dr. Gagliardi is not with us at this time. Various guests and participants in today's meeting. Pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. Can we have a roll call? Thomas Corey? Yes. Michael Coughlin? Yes. Okay, the next item is the approval of the minutes of the meeting from July 27th. Are there any additions, deletions, or corrections to be made to the minutes of the meeting as printed? And I just want to compliment Sandy. This is this is a heck of a set of minutes. You did a good job, Sandy. <laughs> I will pass that along to Sandy. <laughs> Move to approve the minutes. Okay, second. Can we have a roll call? Thomas Corey. Yes. Michael Coughlin. Yes. Okay. Next, we have the request for approval of a tattoo practitioner mm -hmm. license for Carlos Munez of Fall River to work at the Fall River Tattoo Company, 1412 South Main Street, Fall River. Um, Lisa, you're presenting? Yes. Um, I have Carlos here. Um, mm -hmm. It actually expired in April. They, they felt that he wanted a little more time. Um, so they called and he's ready. Every, you know, his. He has all his um all the paperwork seemed to be in order. Everything was here. The word I want to thank, yeah. yeah. But oh. yeah, all, his credentials are all in order. Okay. Um, so yeah, he's ready to go. I've been by there. I actually watched Bruce tattoo yesterday. It's a lot of fun, Bruce. I like that. Oh. <laughs> but everything I'll come visit Bruce someday. <laughs> yeah, I'm watching it. It's fun. That's all I need. <laughs> okay. Um, any any questions by the board? Questions. Do we have a motion to grant? Move to uh, move to grant the license. I'll second. Can we have a roll call? Thomas Corey. Yes. Michael Coughlin. Yes. Okay, Carlos. Congratulations and good luck. No, thank you very much. <laughs> have thank a great you. rest of the day. You too. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Next yeah. item on the agenda is a minimum housing hearing violation report and correction <laughs> order. Uh, Josh is with us, but in a conversation yesterday, I understand the occupant has vacated the premises and the repairs are underway somewhat. Is that correct, Josh? Yes, sir. I spoke with the owner on uh, Monday and the occupant has since been moved out and he just he just got possession of the apartment. So I went by the yesterday went by there yesterday and he is working on the apartment so it's a mess i mean so he's got at least a month's worth of work there to do i mean it's definitely a new bathroom kitchen so he's got quite a bit of work to do in that apartment okay so at this time there's really nothing for us to do because i think the gentleman uh, was just looking for time exactly um, okay all right josh thank you very much no problem next we have a tobacco violation hearing this is a second offense hearing of the Act to Modernize the Tobacco Control by Stop and Save at 208 Stafford Road, Fall River. Is Jennifer presenting? Yes. Yes, this is me. Yep. Oh, all right. Great. Hi. Um, so I'm Jennifer. I'm the Tobacco Control Coordinator. Uh, so on June 16th, um, a compliance check was done at Stop and Save and they were able to purchase a pack of backwards um, cigars for $7. Uh, after that, they did get a cease and desist order for $1,000 for their first offense. Uh, shortly after, I received um, a complaint that they were selling uh, flavored products. So on July 26th, um, an inspection was done and I was able to find a large amount of uh, flavored tobacco products and menthol cigarettes um, at Stop and Save. Uh, so July 28th, a couple days later, I did send over a second cease and desist order uh, to them and issued them a second fine of $2,000. Uh, 
and with a possible suspension. So in total, they did receive a $3,000 fine, um, but all their, all their fines are paid up to date as of July 31st. Okay. Sir, could you state your name and address for the record? Sir, could you state your name and address yes. for the record? Yeah, uh, yeah, my name is Abdul Awal. Okay. And um, now, um, two fines with, with, within a short period of time, menthol cigarettes, which you know are, are not legal in Massachusetts to sell or to have. Um, give us the defense. Yeah, so... Uh... Basically, I'm, uh, uh, this is my store, and I have another one also over here. But uh, I'm I'm coming here like uh, every two weeks one time. So usually uh, I'm living in in New York City, one seven six zero Lexington Avenue. So I have a manager over here. Uh, the first time I heard that he go he sell to the uh, I have uh, we got some uh, minor cigarettes on one cell, and I don't even know what's going on when I come. We found something, like after the fine. So I already fire everyone. Uh, whoever who been uh, uh, dealing with this, the guy, the manager, and even even there was a guy who supplied them. I was waiting for him. If he's come, maybe I'm gonna take his information and I can give it to Miss Jennifer. So you're not on the premises every day. No, uh, I'm coming like weekly, weekly, uh, every two weeks, every other weeks. So, 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 so you're claiming so I have a plan. Uh, maybe I'm going to. I'm sorry. Well, so, um, if so, you're you're an absentee owner. Okay, you admit yes. that. Um. So who orders the cigarettes in and, and supplies like that? Yeah, there was a guy. His name uh, Rafiq. So as my so is he the, is he the ma is he the manager of the store? Is he authorized no, no. to purchase? Who's authorized to purchase these things? They buy from from the cash money in from my store because someone influenced them. They say uh, some customer asked frequently asked them if they have any flavor vape. What was illegal? Like it's not we're not supposed to have anything. So, so you knowingly purchased the menthol cigarettes, knowing they were illegal. No, we 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 never sell before since I opened the store. I was we wasn't sell it, it. So my manager, it was his idea. He sold it, and uh, we got fine, and I fired him already. He's he's saying that the employee is the one who ordered the stuff, and that that employee's been fired. If I had to pay a two thousand dollar fine, some of my employees would be fired too. So that's a, you know, as a small it's, business owner, um, it's, it's, it's it was probably wise to take those personnel actions, sir. But it doesn't absolve you from uh, the, the the fines or or the our consideration of the suspension. So what are you doing now, sir? What's the, the corrective action plan? That's the big thing nowadays. So this never happens again. You're never going to sell to a minor again. You're never going to have menthol cigarettes again. What What's the action plan here? The action is now I, uh, I'm moving over here. I was waiting for a few things back in New York. So I'm moving here. I'm going to work myself. And I promise nothing gonna happen like that. As long as the store with me, it's not gonna happen anymore. Gentlemen, questions, opinions. I missed the beginning. Was this the first or second offense? This is second offense. First was the sale to minors. This is the sale of menthol flavors. And the gentleman has paid the fines already. He's paid three thousand dollars. So we're looking at suspension or not? We're looking at suspension or not. So the, and if the, suspension, the, how long? Suspension is op is optional. It's it's not uh, something that we're 
expected to do or required to do? We have, um, you you have, the board has um, suspended previously for the second offense for seven days um, mm -hmm. for more recent um, establishments. So the, yeah, I remember that. What I'm, what, I, what I'm wondering is if we have ever not suspended for a second offense in the recent past. No, we've always suspended. Yeah, so... Well, I would think we'd have to be consistent. Mm -hmm. that's, that's that's why I asked the question. Yeah. yeah. So unfortunately, you know, as a business owner, you're responsible for the actions of your employees. Um, that's usually the way things go. And, you know, the especially after a first offense, the requirements and rules and penalties are, are brought in front of you. So then when something else happens, it's hard to plead that any kind of ignorance of the rules, I guess. So um, I guess I motioned for suspension for seven days, which is consistent with what we've done. Mm -hmm. Do we have a second? Yes, second. Roll call. Thomas Corey? Yes. Michael Coughlin? Yes. Stephen Gagliardi? Yes. Okay. Jennifer, can you make the arrangements for the prior, for the seven days? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry, sir, but no more sales to minors, no more menthol. And, and if you had things like the menthol cigarettes in, in the house and you bought them not to a, a dealer, you may have a, a tax problem also. Um, Jennifer will be in contact with you when the suspension will start and end and the uh, the um, quarantining of the, of the tobacco products. Okay. So, that's... Like, so seven day I have to close the store or only I cannot sell the smoke product? You cannot sell tobacco products. Tobacco products. Okay. Okay. Thank you. The, the director's report, Tess, what do you have for us today? Um. No, uh, no major updates from last month. Other, um, just then we're continuing on with our grants, um, and and getting um, Michaela up to speed, who's our EPI. Um, I'll try and have her come on maybe next month's meeting. Um, once she has some data, um, to share with you, she's been, um, she's really been tracking a lot of our tick-borne and mosquito-borne, um, illnesses that have been coming through the board locally, um and is going to be able to kind of increase our um, kind of overall analysis and tracking of that beyond the reports that we receive in Maven. So um, so we're working on that as well as um, having her work on um, some opioid settlement um, or, or opioid data um, that will help with the opioid settlement funds and the work that we're doing we're doing there. Um, and with some of the grants, we're going to be able to improve the software um, that we have within the city um, for um, food inspections and other inspections. Um, with that software, Michaela will be able to, to help increase um, the data that we're able to see there, whether or not we're seeing any trends with foodborne illnesses or certain things like that. So um, the grants are really allowing us to to invest more in the department, um, which in turn will just be able to um, create more programs and things like that. Um, one of the team members that had been doing the contact tracing grant, she's been, um, she recently completed her training as a community health worker. Um, so she's been out in the community um, tabling at events um, and really just trying to put a face to the health department in the community um, and providing relevant education in terms of, um, you know, summer safety, sun safety, um, things like that. Um, and she'll be continuing that work um, at least through the end of the grant cycle, which will be until June 30th. Um, and then we'll see where funding lies for her to continue on. Um, but those are kind of just some of the main updates, um, again, tied into the grant, because it's just helping us pour, pour some funding into the department. Okay, very good. Thank you. 
did we receive anything for citizens input? No, we did not. Okay, gentlemen, following our usual schedule, the next meeting would be the 4th, uh, Thursday in September would be the 28th. Does that look clear for everybody? Yes. You know what? Uh, Thursdays are going to be difficult for me this semester because I'm teaching two, two three-hour classes on Thursday. Okay. I wonder if, if, you, if you guys would entertain a different day for the next few months. I, I'm open. That's no no problem for me. Dr. Gagliotti, how was your schedule look? Um, Mondays or Tuesdays would would be okay. Is... Tuesdays okay? Yeah. yeah. Mike, would the, Tuesday, would that test, would that be all right with the uh, with you in the department? <laughs> yes, uh, that, that should be fine. Um, yes. Okay, so whatever we, works for you all, we can make work. So it would be Tuesday the 26th? That sound okay? Yep. Thank, thank you. Thank you both. No problem. And, yes, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Tess, is there any other business to come before the board of such a nature that it couldn't make the agenda? No, no new business. Very good. Can we have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Um, okay. All right. Do we need a roll call for that? Yes. Um, Michael, uh, Thomas Corey. <laughs> yes. Um, Michael Coughlin. Yes. Stephen Gagliardi. Yes. Okay, we will stand in adjournment. Thank you all. We won't see each other. Have a wonderful Labor Day weekend next week. Do something exciting. We'll try. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.